hard she is, sir. <clears throat> Anything wrong, Carter? Rather bad news for Cuthbert Ware Armitage. Oh, good. You haven't seen him, I suppose? Yes, he just paid off the 18th tee. Oh, thank you very much. I say. Uh, yes? Ware Armitage? Yes, yes? I'm afraid I'm the bearer of some very sad news. Really? Your father, Sir Percy, been killed in an accident. Oh, crashed his flying machine, I suppose. Kept telling to buy a new one, it's too belly mean. Still, I suppose that's the way he would have wanted to go, eh? Would you chaps mind very much if I had a few moments with my thoughts? Poor chap, he's taking it very bravely. I gather it was all over in the beginning. Well, should we carry on with the game? I'm sure that's what the dear old Peter would have wanted. You're not serious. The match must be abandoned. Abandoned? We've got a fire on it. Don't you remember? Come on, you look for your ball and I'll look for mine. I say, my ball's right here. What a bit of jam. My dear fellow, playing golf after a tragedy like this, well, well, it isn't cricket. Look, my dear old fruit, it may be a tragedy to you, but it certainly isn't to me. Don't you realize I inherit the title, the estate, the chairmanship of Ware Armitage, the whole caboodle? I'm rich. I am stinking, ruddy well rich. I say it certainly is my day. since I was here last. Oh, we do our best, sir. We, uh... Man, it's over into the shed, I think. That's a sink. It's all mine. Not exactly all yours, sir. What the hell are you talking about? Of course, well, we're actually... It's only half yours. Half? You mean half? Yeah. <clears throat> well, some time ago, when, um, when you were in foreign parts, your dear father suffered a loss. Unusual, even for him. What? Well, I don't know the details, but apparently he lost half the share in the factory in a game of poker. Apparently, Just a minute. The Peter never lost. <clears throat> By default, sir. He had six cars in his hand instead of five. Ghastly. In court, I mean. Well, who won? A Mr. Chester Schofield, sir, from Detroit. And uh, a bit of a nuisance. He's practically taken over the whole works, trying to inject American know-how. What do you mean he's here now? Oh, yes. He's been here for six months, works day and night, night and day, and doesn't take a penny in salary. Well, as long as he's increasing the profits. There aren't going to be any profits this year, sir. What? Mr. Schofield's policy is one of expansion. He's invested every penny we've got in new plant, and he's raised all salaries. Go. Now, if you please, he's engaged in redesigning the Nifty Nine. It looks as though I've arrived in the nick of time. Where is this blighter now? Well, now it'll be in here, sir. Come on. What's that row? That's a love of the Yankees' ideas, sir. Music while you work, not worth the needle. Come on. Damn silly idea. Never catch on. Just a minute. Who's been having a picnic off Dad's nifty nine? Sorry, Dad. Won't happen again. Hi, Perky. Who's the grease ball? <clears throat> Cuthbert Ware Armitage, Baronet. Which means you call me Sir. Well, it's certainly a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Sir Cuddy, Sir. Put it there. Sir! What? Schoolboy buzzer. Outrageous. Perkins, this is my partner. I'm afraid so, yes, sir. May I introduce Mr. Chester Schofield, the second? The second? Neither are two of them. Oh, come here, Cuddy, baby. Come here. Oh, let me show you something. Relax, will you? 
take a look at that baby. Isn't she beautiful? We're gonna call it the Triple S. We're really going places, you and I. Zowie. That's to the workhouse. Please, do we have to have this bloody row? What's the matter, sweetheart? Don't you like it? I'll fix it. No self-respecting Englishman would have seen dead in that monstrosity. I mean, it doesn't even look like a motor car. It looks more like a, an upholstered roller skate. It's the first and the last we make. Perkins, see to it. Um, oh. Oh. Keep your throttle open, partner. We're 50-50, remember? Yes, and my 50% says he's got to stop and see to it, Perkins. Yes, perhaps Mr. Scope would like to sell you back his shares. Hmm. Sure. For a cool half a million simoleons. Now, if you haven't got that kind of mazuma, how... I'll tell you what. Pick a card. Any card oh, you like. Oh, it makes no difference. Go ahead, pick a card. Any card you like, huh? Uh, Queen of Spades, right? Right, it was. <laughs> That's this one, baby. Ace of Hearts. It's gone. Here it is. <laughs> tell you what we're going to do, you and I. Why don't we play one hand of poker? Five card stud. Winner, take all. Oh, play cards with you? I'd rather play with my old father. Okay, Tin Horn, it's all the same to me. 50 50. How are you going to get out of this nightmare? Check in. Are we too late to enter for the Monte Carlo rally this year? No, sir, but we've always thought it wiser to stay out. Why? Well, since your uh, father was requested to return the trophy. Yes, he was a bit careless that year, wasn't he? Still nothing to do with me. I say, Schofield, old being, I uh, think I've thought of a way in which we can find out which is the best man and the best machine for the welfare of this firm. We'll both enter for the Monte. You drive the roller skate, and I'll drive the Nifty Nine. The winner takes all. Fair enough? Um, what is this, uh, Monte? Uh, some kind of a race? Uh, no, it isn't a race. It's more of an endurance test run under strict rules, 1,500 miles on the most diabolical of roads, in the most inclement weather in Europe, and finishing in the Monte Carlo by that dip dip dip. Yes, yes. Well, Schofield, are you man enough to take me on? Sure, but uh, are you cuddy baby? I certainly am, and so is Perkins. Me? Well, you'd like a nice trip to La Belle France, wouldn't you, Perkins? Yes. If I can get permission from Mrs. Perkins. Oh, you leave her to me. I wish I could. Well, Schofield, is it a deal? It's a deal, MacNeil. What? <laughs> <laughs> Zoe? Do you think he's got a chance, sir? Against a wear armitage? Don't be barely ridiculous. <laughs>